Hi everyone, it's Ella with Being Type 1, and on this short series, I'm going to be teaching you guys about diabetic ketoacidosis, what it is, and how it is treated. Now, diabetic ketoacidosis mm. is an mm. acute, oh, something, that's a Dexcom. Diabetes is a lifelong, no cure kind of condition. I am talking specifically about type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. It occurs when the body's pancreas is attacked by the immune system and all insulin producing cells are killed. This leaves the person affected with type 1 diabetes, insulin dependent for life. Insulin is delivered every day for the rest of the person's life. The person has to test their blood sugar multiple times a day. They also need to administer insulin continuously or through multiple daily injections. Wearing an insulin pump is the most optimal way to manage your insulin delivery. Insulin delivery is done in two ways, either an insulin pump or multiple daily injections. I'll do a pump versus MDI later. This video will be focused on DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis is an acute, uh, acute illness, acute state rather, that um, meaning it doesn't last long. So like type 1 diabetes is classified as a chronic illness because there's life support for it, but there's no cure. It is a constant daily battle. DKA is a short-term emergent condition that can occur in a type 1 either at diagnosis or at other times in their life for different reasons. Sometimes infection, sometimes extreme stress, sometimes a mix of infection and stress, other things like if, uh, if someone has a stomach bug and they're not able to take in enough um, carbs and liquids uh, by mouth because of vomiting, if someone has gastroparesis, which again, same concept wise as the nausea and vomiting, if when, if when someone like, for example, when I have gastro, because I have gastroparesis, I'm prone to rapid onset decay because it is always a very delicate, careful balance of keeping those ketones away. So because of that, I have to have my IV fluids on almost all the time. And I have to have my IV meds and such all throughout my daily life in addition to managing my type 1 diabetes which is the insulin pump plus my continuous glucose monitor plus of course the um, blood sugar checks every two to three hours so right now I'm in the ICU we have just about kicked DK out through out there. Bye-bye. We beat it. So, what is diabetic ketoacidosis? Diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA for short, is a severe, life-threatening condition that must be evaluated in an emergency department and is treatable in an ICU-level setting. That means the intensive care unit. DKA occurs when there is a lacking in insulin delivery or insulin absorption and the body is not able to combine insulin and the carbohydrates or glucose and bond basically to make energy. So what happens is, and this is, there are three really golden components, carbs, insulin, hydration. So, for example, 
carbs, insulin, and hydration. A lot of times, these two are more focused. When carbs go in, the insulin goes in to cover the carbs, and there's background hydration, and then you're okay. When you're dehydrated, even if you try to take in carbs and you still take your insulin, you're still gonna end up getting high blood sugar and ketones if your body is not hydrated. Sometimes the basic starts are when your blood sugar is above 250, you check for ketones. You make sure you drink plenty of fluids and change your infusion set or take an injection depending on if you're an individual type one, whatever. Care plan. So, it is, so DK happens when the body becomes in an acidotic state because they don't have hydration, insulin, and carbs. Or, they're not mixing correctly in the body, per se. The, okay, that's like a scientific sheet. Okay, so what does it feel like? I've been DKA several times since I've developed gastroparesis. Because if I have an infection that goes untreated, and if I get stressed out, or if I get dehydrated, I can end up in DKA. What I experience typically is vomiting, volatile vomiting, nausea, constant, extreme, unquenchable thirst, abdominal pain, like pain in your tummy, frequent urination, having to pee all the time, body aches. That's one that I really hate. It's your whole body just aches. Headaches. Just exhaustion. And extreme hunger for some people. I don't get that one. So, when diabetic ketoacidosis occurs, it is at first, SLIC can be determined if one is high and has ketones at home by checking the blood sugar, checking the ketones. If your blood ketones are 0 0.6 or below, Oh, no, I have to redo that. If your blood ketones are 0, 0.0 to 0, 0.5, that's considered zip. You're good. Once you're between 0. 0.6 and 1.4, that is at risk for diabetic ketoacidosis. At a reading of 1.5 or higher, a patient is considered in diabetic ketoacidosis and should proceed to the nearest emergency room. You can obtain a blood, glu a blood ketone monitor through your endocrinologist's office and ordering one from a mail order diabetes supply company as well. It is very important to check ketones regularly when you're high because a lot of times DKA can be beaten without the hospital. If someone's able to catch those highs, that ketones, they change their insulin pump site, you know, get that insulin going and start drinking tons and tons of fluids, then a lot of times you'll be able to clear it. Or if you're on shots, did you make sure you took your last Lantus dose? Sometimes when you're on shots, you have to take even more insulin in general. When If you have an illness, you have to take more insulin and try to drink even more fluids to avoid acidosis. If one goes into ketoacidosis, it'll kind of go a little bit like this. They'll go to the hospital, they'll draw some blood work, and they'll take your pee, you'll have to pee in a cup, and they'll take your pee, and they'll test your blood work and your pee, and then once they have the results, they will probably, and if you are in DKA, so if your anion gap is greater than 12 and your beta hydroxybutyrate is 1.5 or above, then you'll be moved to the ICU 
in the ICU, they will start an insulin drip. It just looks like this. And this small bag over here is the insulin. And on your IV pump, it will look a little bit similar to this. Then you'll have your maintenance fluids with some potassium sometimes. My potassium has been really low, so they've had to do a lot of RER, which is just rapid electrolyte replacement. All that really means is my body doesn't have some of the electrolytes it needs, so I needed to get a lot of IV magnesium and potassium and phosphorus. And tomorrow I'll have to get iron. But uh, they'll put you on the insulin drip. Your blood sugar will be checked every hour, often on the hour. You'll also get some medications that help with nausea, pain, or just whatever else is going on. Maybe an antibiotic as well. The ICU can be a scary place when it's your first time and you don't know what to expect. This has been my over 30th trip to the ICU since I got sick about two and a half, about two and a half years ago. Your ICU room your ICU room will probably look something similar to this. There will be a chair, a garbage can, your IV pump, a sink, a monitor, a supply of stuff over there, a window, hopefully, a weird toilet thing, and a garbage, and then your board. My nurses on this unit know me really well, so they always know that when I come in, my number one goal is to get my diabetes, our number one goal is to get my diabetes less brittle AF. <laughs> so they do that because they know it makes us, puts a smile on my face. So That's kind of the grand old tour. When I first came in, I was puking and I was having really bad nausea and so dehydrated and my stomach hurt so bad, but they gave me all those medicines to make me feel a lot better. They also put this O2 on. Recently, my O2 stats have been starting to fail during my DKA episodes. So now as a new part of our protocol, because I'm myotically complex, we have a protocol. We put the O2 on. This helps me a lot. And it helps me make sure I have enough breath to tell the doctors everything they need to know and all that. So, I hope this video was helpful and I hope you never have to endure this. But for those wondering what it's like, eh, well, this is kind of what it's like.